that was a little too much. Like, how how are y'all not even filming yet? It's not even started yet. Like, y'all already arguing over nothing. Anyway, just y'all. guys welcome back to the channel it's your girl Judy here back with another video so you're finally going to be getting into okay 90 day fiance happily ever after season 7 this is going to be their tell-all and in this video we are going to be discussing part one like I said in my other video when I was talking about the most toxic man I've ever seen on a reality television show <laughs> y'all can check that out right here I was talking about Chris from season 12 of married at first sight yeah, check that out because that was a whirlwind of a video. In that video, I pretty much said that I was going to be making a separate video for each episode of the tell-all and hopefully I actually follow through on that plan. <laughs> I know I probably will because I do feel as though I have thoughts that I need to share with you guys. So that's what we're going to do here. But this is going to be episode one or part one of the tell-all for the Happily Ever After spinoff. And boy, do I have quite a bit to get through. I actually have my book here with my notes. <laughs> Just things that I really didn't want to forget to talk about in this video when I did my little review. But I think there's going to be four parts ultimately of the tell-all because I think so far they've only done three and I still don't think they've even touched the surface of all the couples yet. So yeah but let's hop right into it shall we okay so we open up with part one with angela and she's basically saying how because michael cheated we find out in one of the episodes unfortunately he was cheating on angela and this was over on social media and that's kind of why they were saying that angela wanted him off his socials right angela exposes that she has a secret weapon for michael basically to expose him and all of his lies on the tell-all right and i was like okay who is this person right but we don't find that out really until i think the second part but this time around we actually get a lot more footage and behind the scenes like not just what happens on set you know we get to see them mix and mingle with each other go to dinner have drinks all that right but before we get into that we find out that big ed had actually kicked liz out of his house so she had to now be roommates with a guy friend of hers but before that, she was actually couch surfing. Yeah, so I thought that was pretty wild to me. But when we finally get to New York, Jovi and Andre had met up for some drinks because I think they felt as though they had some things to talk about and hash out and they didn't really get to know each other, I think is what they said. So they meet up for drinks and that doesn't go too well. Andre starts talking about his relationship issues, things that have been going on in his marriage and then ultimately what's been going on between him and his wife Libby's family aka Elizabeth they've been having a lot of issues that's been playing out on the show but again I do say like I've said in previous videos about Andre I personally feel like Andre definitely has some deeply rooted anger issues that he needs to work through because he for some strange reason just does not know how to contain himself in some instances and situations let's just say that he just doesn't know how to almost put a lid on it and just kind of simmer down until he could talk about his feelings and not fight with people physically you know but the only person he actually physically put his hands on i believe was libby's brother charlie so correct me if i'm wrong but i don't think he actually put his hands on anyone oh wait there was that fight between andre and Libby's sister. I think this was after Libby had told them, well, not told them, but told social media that she was pregnant. So the family found out through social media <laughs> that she was pregnant. She didn't tell them. I think Andre and Libby were trying to tell her two sisters that her dad was interested in having like a group session with all the family members, like all the siblings. And I was like, y'all sure y'all wanna do that? Like, really? But anyways, I'm getting off track here. But either way, one of the older sisters, she ends up kind of putting her hands on Andre. And Andre actually kind of refrains himself. So I was like, look at you actually having 
some type of standards for yourself like you know i'm not going to fight and engage with you know a female on that level like no because that just make me look bad so he's just trying his best to like you know get her off of him because she's the one that's kind of the aggressor in that situation so i was proud of andre in that moment but i do feel he uses the f-bomb way too much and i think that's what gets people agitated but anyway so he of course is telling jovi about all this is going on with the family and all that and jovi is just like well do you ever think that you might be the problem andre loses it he's just like what do you mean i might be the effing problem like i, I sh i'm not the effing problem it's libby's effing family yeah 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 and <laughs> ooh, Charlotte goes downhill from there. And then obviously Andre starts taking low blows at Jovi, talking about how in the last season of 90 Day Fiance that he was taking Yara to a strip club and stuff like that. He should be ashamed of himself. And I was like, that's in the past though. Like it's not like he's going to strip clubs now, right? I just thought that was kind of weird. It was like, how are you going to bring up your problems? And then when people try to give you advice on the situation, you try to pick a fight with them too. It's just kind of like uh you might actually have some problems andre don't get me wrong jovi has his issues the whole strip club thing and then going out all the time yeah that was an issue but it's like it's okay to just take some type of advice and accountability for your part to play in situations you know that didn't go so well but we see that jenny makes it over to the u.s and she kind of has her little culture shock because she's been in India with Submit all this time. She had to get used to the food. Obviously, in India, they cook with a lot of spices, very heavy-handed. So you almost have to get used to a whole different palate again. But she ends up meeting up with Kim. And they're just like, oh yeah, we're both from San Diego. And I just felt like a kindred spirit from you. And I was like, you're both old. Just say that. You're both old and you're both dating men that are probably 20 years younger than y'all. Just say that. <laughs> That's what the connection is really, you know? But anyway, so Yara and Shida meet up and they go shopping and they start talking about joint accounts, accounts with their husbands. And obviously, you know, Yara, I think she has a joint account with Jovi. But then when it comes to Shida, she's thinking about how her and Bilal, they tried to have that conversation and she just got shot down. That's that's kind of what she says. From then, you know, Shida goes back to Bilal and she tries to have that conversation again and rehash it. And Bilal brings up this very interesting point. And even though Bilal has done things in the past, that I find very questionable. I think that he brought up a very good point is that Shida is very impressionable. She gets kind of swayed by people really easily and she takes what people have to say to heart. Just like some things, yes, it's worth talking about and pursuing, but other things, you know, other parts of what people say, you just kind of let it go, you know what I'm saying? But I think she is very impressionable. She's a very impressionable person and she's very easily swayed by the uh, words of others and I think that's kind of dangerous so yeah I do have to kind of agree with Bilal on this one. What I found interesting too is that when I think it was during the uh, season she had met up with one of her friends I think from the UK had came over and I think this is when they were in New York actually before the tell-all this is during the actual show. They meet up with Shida's friend and Shida talking to her friend about wanting to have a baby, how Bilal is just putting it off, and I have my issues with that, but we're gonna get into that later. In this episode, basically, her friend's trying to give her advice and telling her that she needs to put her foot down and stuff like that. But the thing is, the timing that Shida uses to basically talk about the whole baby thing, it's like, y'all are in a whole other state trying to have a vacation. I feel like that was not the right time to put your foot down and tell Bilal that this is the ultimatum. You need to decide and tell me and give me a date as to when we can start having kids or I may have to leave this marriage, basically. It's just kind of like, why do that on a trip that you guys are trying to enjoy yourselves on? That I felt was just something that kind of destroyed the whole vibe of the trip almost, you know? It just, it wasn't the right time. But anyway, obviously I feel she needed to talk about that, but her friend kind of pushed her in a way because she is, like I said, so impressionable. She felt like she had to say something right then and there and it just wasn't the right time you know but anyways the cast finally ends up on the set and big ed tells kim because kim is the first one to show up after ed and he says to her you know my therapist always says to me you need to be okay with living alone 
I was like, what? Ed, what? Like, you need to be okay with living alone? Like, I don't, okay, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, when it comes to Ed, it's like he was so gung-ho on having Liz move in with him into his house. It wasn't even their house together, which is why back to him kicking her out, it was no big deal to him. And then on top of that, with them breaking up so many times, she had to obviously keep leaving the house. Yeah, I, I personally feel like, Ed, you tell people things and I really think you should just take your own advice, but moving on. Shida ends up meeting Angela when her and Bilal are in the elevator going to the set. And I think Angela was kind of acting, I guess, really out there, really outgoing because that's kind of who she is. But she was talking about how Shida was so beautiful. And then I think she'd also start talking about how Bilal looked nice. And I was like, okay. But then Shida in that moment, she was like, yeah, um, I'm gonna probably need to keep an eye on Angela because I know she likes the black man. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I am finished, I am finished in that moment. But in my mind, I was like, Shida, trust me, you have nothing to worry about. Look at Angela. <laughs> no offense, but look at Angela. I know that sounds bad, but like really, Angela's either in her 50s or 60s, having relationship issues with her husband, also trying to cheat on her husband with this other guy, Billy, telling him she got a, a crush on him. I'm just saying, like, you, you ain't got nothing to worry about, sis. Nothing to worry about, okay? Before Bilal and Shida come in, Ed is just like, yeah, I felt like what Bilal did was right on the money, in terms of the pranks anyway, on Shida in that 90 Day Fiance season. Yeah, he's just saying, yeah, yeah, I think he's a genius and I think I am pretty much going to be here on this show to come to bat for him, right? To support him. He was also saying how he didn't like how Shida had put like a clause in their prenup about having a child. And I was like, how is that not fair? You're asking all of this of your wife, but your wife can also ask something of you? How is that fair? And even Jovi, Jovi's low-key a dummy, but you know, whatever. I give him a pass, you know, but still, it's, he low-key kind of dumb. But the thing is, he was agreeing with Ed and saying that, you know, that's not right. And I was like, but it's okay for Bilal to say all of this stuff and tell her that she needs to do all this stuff. Pull up her end of the bargain, but she can't give him requirements as well. That's not making sense to me. So yeah, so Andre comes in. He comes in without Elizabeth or Libby because she's super pregnant at this point that they're shooting this tell-all. But of course, you know, as of right now, she does actually have the baby. But at the time of shooting, she was just super pregnant. So she couldn't fly in with Andre. So he comes alone. Now, before filming, trying to get everything together and Angela comes in and Usman's on the screen. And oh my God, Angela just starts cussing this man out. They're going back and forth. Of course, Kim and Usman are broken up at this point. So Kim's just like, keep me out of this. Like, I'm not in this. Y'all handle your business. And I'm just gonna play that clip for y'all real quick. So keep it's, me out of it. It's not gonna be good, stupid ass. Shut the up, here you go already. Get out, Shut get out, get out, tell out. me that. Shut it's not gonna be good, who the Who the you think is scared of you? You're all talking no action. Let me tell you something. You're using this woman. Rubbish. He Big used you and you're a beautiful woman. Stop. Let's well, guys, get your can we please stop the not even starting yet. Yeah. So in the end, Yara's trying to like calm Angela down and they're going back and forth and Jovi's little docile behind is just sitting there like, mm, well, nah, you know, okay. <laughs> you know, just chilling. And you know, after that, Angela, she just takes off her bike. She's walking off set all angry and Michael's trying to call her to get her back on set you know yeah anyways so I just thought that was a little too much like how how are y'all not even filming yet it's not even started yet like y'all already arguing over nothing anyways y'all but moving on so the first couple on the hot seat was Big Ed and Liz and oh my god the dysfunction I think they're probably gonna need another video kind of similar to how I did with Kim and Usman so they're on the hot seat and we found out that they're still together but Big Ed or Ed we're just gonna call him Ed for now but Ed had kicked out Liz like I said she was couch surfing until she could find a place with a roommate we found out is a guy she doesn't really care if Ed has a problem with that because 
she's not living with you you kicked her out your house so why should you care that type of way right so they're still together they're engaged but they're not living together and they see each other every other day and they tell this to the host and the rest of the couples hear this and they're just like that's so weird it's very complicated and very weird that it has to be every other day but okay so ed pretty much kind of goes into detail as to why he thinks this is working for them he says them living separately and only seeing each other every other day is giving him a chance to feel more secure and he's not jealous anymore and liz is just like that's a lie because you're still very much so jealous so yeah, he gets exposed. <laughs> he gets exposed on that. We find out that Liz had actually found Ed on a Asian dating site, pretty much looking for Asian women. And he's saying that it was an old account. He wasn't active on it. And I'm like, um, okay, sir, sure. If you say so, right? We find out that Ed was actually still talking to his ex fiance, Rose Marie. Yeah yeah he's still talking to her and it's very clear obviously if you have an ex-fiance that's filipino i think rosemary is clearly asian okay and he's also found on an asian dating site clearly he has a type and obviously you could look at liz and see that she's not asian she doesn't fit that mold so we're trying to figure out what he's doing right we're, what what's happening Obviously, everybody gasped because they're just like, what is going on? Are you still talking to your ex? But what's crazier, too, is that the host, she asked him straight up, like, are you still talking to your ex? Have you texted her, messaged her, any of that? And he's just like, I don't remember. Ed, you don't remember. You sure as hell have enough storage space in that brain of yours to rattle off every single thing that Liz has done or said to you, but you don't have the space, memory bank space, to remember if you had texted your ex or called her, talked to her at any point. Sounds like some BS to me, okay? Sounds like some straight BS to me. And obviously they had to bring Rosemary to verify because she was the only one that was gonna be telling the truth. The only party here that was gonna catch Ed in his lies. So I wanna read the text message that we end up finding between Rosemary and Ed. Hopefully I'm saying her name correctly because I don't think it was Rosemary, but they call her Rose for short. So I'm gonna say Rose. So Ed is saying to Rose, I hope all is well, you look amazing. And Rose says, thanks. And then he says, I want to come to the Philippines. Yeah, okay, she's Filipino. I want to come to the Philippines again to see if you're open. To see if you're open to what, Ed? To see if you're open to what? So Rose responds, she says, yes, you can come here. You're welcome here. And I'm trying to figure out, Rose, more than likely you know this man is in a relationship. What are we doing here? You know what I'm saying? It's like everybody was looking at Ed, but I was like, I'm pretty sure this woman knows that you're in a relationship. It's broadcasted on television, so I'm pretty sure she knows. But we're, we're going to move on, child. We're just going to give Rose the benefit of the doubt because she ain't the one in a relationship and she ain't the one that was supposed to not be cheating. So whatever. Anyways, so obviously Rose and Liz have a very cordial conversation about Big Ed's cheating. And Ed is just pretty much just like deny, deny, deny. He is in straight denial mode and it just goes left field from there and in tell all part two which we're gonna talk about in another video that's coming soon it's a roller coaster of emotions and crazier things on ed's side of things that he says we'll talk about it all in that video y'all but that is pretty much where part one left off and it gets very intense very intense very fast y'all could let me know your thoughts down in the comments on part one i just think so far with ed and liz they're gonna need a whole other video because the relationship dynamic was so what oh child but anyway <laughs> that was very descriptive i know <laughs> y'all can let me know your thoughts down in the comments i'll catch you on the next one peace